So, I'm back again. It's been a while. You know, I never expected both of my previous videos to do as well as it did now. And with that, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for watching the video and supporting me. This year has been pretty rough for all of us, and I'm glad that I have helped you learn something new in one way or another. For today's video, I would like to bring your attention to this individual from Singapore named Benjamin Tan. No, not Benjamin Tan the actor. This Benjamin Tan, the Amazon guru from Leap Vista. But before we go into the video, I wanted to move into somewhere that is a little bit brighter. Before I start, I would like to preface that the saga I'm covering today is still ongoing, meaning there will be new information coming in as time goes on. The information that will be presented today is based on the information that I've compiled up until November 10th, 2020. This video is in no way a complete and definitive truth to the situation that we will be discussing today. We wouldn't know the full story until the relevant parties make further statements, so you should take all of this information with a grain of salt. Consider this as an opinion piece of sorts. If new information comes up, I'll be sure to leave it in the pinned comment below. With that said, let's start with a question. What is it about Benjamin Tan that had attracted my attention in the first place? To understand this question, we have to lay out the backstory first. Then, we can start working our way up from there. To some of you, you have probably have been well acquainted with Benjamin Tan thanks to this video made by Rishi just last month. And if you haven't watched his video yet, I highly recommend you checking it out after this video. The link will be in the description and the title card. So, Rishi had made a video exposing Singapore's marketing gurus, using Benjamin Tan, the Amazon guru, as an example. In his video, he showed the viewers that marketing gurus such as Benjamin Tan uses the same business tactics to funnel customers into their free masterclass. The main pitch that all of these marketing gurus have is that their courses have quote-unquote value. Whether or not they decided to say this out loud, the point is still the same. They wanted to give out the impression that their courses provide the best value for you, due to how it will change your life for the better. Now, they couldn't just give their wisdom away for free, can they? They have to somehow compensate their time and effort in teaching people how to become as successful as them. So they will gracefully charge you a small fee of 2,000 US dollars every month, out of the kindness of their own heart, of course. Now, if you think that the courses are too expensive for the common folk, then congratulations, you're one of the people who are not crazy. Because you know you don't have to invest in your hard-earned money for knowledge that can be obtained at no cost whatsoever from the internet anyways. So, after the video got released, it blew up and got viral. And at some point, when Rishi's video started gaining traction on YouTube, Benjamin Tan must have seen this video. And in his initial response, he seems to be cool with it. He even went to Rishi's video and commented about how his video has good entertainment value and nice editing. A few days later, Benjamin Tan had a change of heart and decided to delete his comment under Rishi's video. But that's not all. Benjamin, with his infinite wisdom, used his legal team to issue a takedown notice on Rishi's video for copyright infringement. Right, 
So in the last video I said if you think that I'm talking absolute bullshit just call me out right but instead of doing that leave the star Benjamin and their lawyer attempted attempted uh, to send a copyright strike to this entire channel for that video to be taken down and I quote I quote with immediate effect seeing as his takedown notice didn't do much on Rishi Benjamin decided to dig himself deep into the hole he sent out a cease and desist letter to Rishi. At this point, some of you may be wondering to yourself, what is a cease and desist letter? Well, according to this handy little website I found, it is a letter, usually written by an attorney, to ask a party to stop performing an illegal activity. This letter is typically a first formal step taken to warn an offender that legal action may take place if they don't stop the illegal activity. Note that the cease and desist letter is not legally binding and was therefore served to reflect the opinion of the one writing the letter. So now the question would be, how do I know that Benjamin and his legal team are the ones who sent out the cease and desist letter to Rishi and not somebody else? And why did they decide to write a cease and desist letter to Rishi? According to the snippets posted here, we get to see that the letter included the number of views the video that they wanted to take down has. If you take one look at the list of Rishi's videos and its view count, I think the answer is quite obvious as to who done it. As for the second question that we have, the answer is also quite obvious. Take another look at the snippet of the letter again, we get to see the justification given by Benjamin's legal team. They say that the popularity of Rishi's video had inflicted losses and damage to Benjamin's reputation. So now is the time for me to give my two cents on the matter. I'll try to provide a measured response, as I do believe that Benjamin will also find a reason to sue me as well no matter if the points made against him are in good faith or otherwise. You, my viewer, will be the judge on that front, and you're free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. In my opinion, I don't believe Rishi's video should be taken off of YouTube, and there's a reason for this. His videos, as far as I'm concerned, is his opinion piece on the business practices used by marketing gurus. He never shies away from telling the viewers to correct him if he's wrong about the things he said. And that includes you too, Benjamin. You have the opportunity to explain to other people why Rishi is wrong and why your business practice isn't shady at all. Instead of doing that, you decided to go out of your way to send a takedown notice on Rishi's video and later send a cease and desist letter to him when that didn't work. And it's all because you can't seem to answer the criticisms levied against you. Here's my genuine question to you, Benjamin. Do you think that by intimidating other people to take down videos critical of you, all of the public ridicule you have garnered will magically go away? Do I have to remind you of this thing called the Streisand effect? The more you try to hide, remove, or censor criticism against you, the more people will know about the very thing you try to hide. So not only people will remember you as an annoying Amazon guru who uses shady means to get money from other people, now people will remember you as being pro-censorship and a suppressor, much like Kevin David. One more thing, Benjamin. For someone who preaches to other people about not entertaining the haters, you seem to be taking them too seriously. Ironic, isn't it? It makes me wonder if you believed in the things you've preached to other people. Because it didn't seem like you did. So the next question would be more like, um, so because in a seminar space, in teaching, in, in, you know, in this education space, there's a lot of fake gurus. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of negative light on this. How much trolls do you have to deal with on a daily basis? <laughs> hmm, trolls. <laughs> yeah. People who are negative and uh, like, like, and how do you deal with it? I always have this belief uh, that if someone is throwing shit at you, 
at your back, if they're throwing shit at your back, right? It means one thing. It means that they are behind you. Mm. And there are some people that would love to see you succeed and they will want to push you out. They, they would love to support you. And some people that will simply love to see you fail and they try to pull you down to the level. So for me, it is what I choose to focus on because I've come to realize very long ago, I can never please the world. Yeah. I can be doing something on my own, not even boring anyone. And I could still have people who hate me for that because I'm not contributing. I'm not giving back. I'm not adding value. Yeah. Then on the other hand, the other extreme, I could be trying my best to add value to really go out there and share this message with people. And I could have people out there saying, oh, you're doing this for the money. You're doing this for the fame. Uh, yeah. why, don't you, why don't you work from home and make so much money like you claim you are doing? Yeah. So I realized that it's what I choose to focus on because there will be people that believe in what I'm doing. People yeah. who believe in my vision and my message and can see my can see my, my true intention. And these yeah. are the people that I choose to focus on to serve them because yeah. they are the people that want to get help anyway. Yeah. And I believe that you can only help the people that want to be helped. In fact, uh, earlier when you just when you mentioned about how no matter where you are, people will say shit about you. Yep. People will show shit at you no matter where you are, right? Um, I mean, it, remind, it reminded me of Bill Gates. Like he has done super, right? But yet, people, there's this whole controversy going on right now that he yeah. was the one who created coronavirus so he can sell more vaccine. And, and, and Bill Gates is way like a thousand past, past that, right? <laughs> and yet people are saying shit about him. Uh, where you know he's, he created a virus so that he can sell more vaccine. It's ridiculous. But I suppose calling people like Rishi and me as haters are much more convenient to you. That way, you can just deflect or dismiss all the points we make. But that still doesn't make the criticisms go away, Benjamin. And neither is the case if you're trying to strike down Rishi's video or mine. The internet doesn't work that way. They have a memory of an elephant. Let me remind you once again that you have a lot of opportunities to not be a proverbial villain in the story, Benjamin. You have so many chances to be a bigger man in this predicament. You can respond to the misconceptions people have about your business practices. But you just have to choose to escalate the situation. There is no turning back now. Your reputation is done for. How can anybody respect you after all of this? This situation proves to me that you're nothing more than a pathetic businessman. The fact that you tried to intimidate someone into submission by threatening legal action against them proves this. It proves to me that you have no other justification for continuing your shady business practices. And that to me is a sign of guilt. Just drop the case already. Even though people will look at you worse than they did before you created this legal kerfuffle, at least you don't have to sink your reputation any lower. If this is the hill that you choose to die on, do know that you will never regain any goodwill from the people again. This will only serve to speed up your downfall. I urge you to do the right thing for your own sake.